Well, first of all, Asha, thank you for the kind words and the introduction. And um, I have to tell you all, I am just honored to be able to speak to you all tonight. It's so neat to see all your faces. Hi, Maria. <laughs> I see you out there. Um, just, uh, I know your time is, is very valuable and I am just absolutely honored to talk to you all. I'm hoping that something I say, one thing I say will stick and help you in your career. And so what I wanna do, I wanna take and introduce myself a little bit deeper. Asha really covered most of it, so there's not much more I will add, but I wanna um, have you all get to know me a little bit better and, and where I came from. And then I wanna take you through what I think helped me in my career to get to where I am. And then the pitfalls that I stepped into, uh, the mistakes I made and what I learned and specifically, um, what can affect women as they travel through their professional journey. And I've learned a lot in that area and I still struggle with certain things. So I'm gonna turn on a presentation and hopefully my daughter tried to train me to share my screen with sound because I do have a video clip that I love that I wanna share with you all. And so I think I got it. She would be very proud of me. Let's see here. And can you all see my screen? I'm hoping, yes, yay. Okay, good job, <laughs> good job me. <clears throat> so thank you Asha for the introduction. Asha went through, as, I, as she said, I am currently the Chief Financial Officer, Senior Vice President of Finance and Human Resources at Intuity Medical, which is a private medical device company. My career has spanned high growth life science companies, um, both as Asha stated, public, private companies, um, I, um, pharmaceutical, medical device, diagnostic laboratory tools, any type of life science company. It's something that I'm passionate about and we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, I have been very blessed in my career because I step into these high growth companies, I've been blessed to participate in taking two of the private companies I've been with through their initial IPOs, um, initial public offering. And I've had three companies that I've taken through good profitable M&A transactions. So two of my private companies were acquired by larger public companies. One company that we actually took through its initial public offering was later acquired um, by a larger public company. And it may sound kind of boring, like what does that all mean? But if you're in finance, those are kind of fun transactions and you don't always get to experience those. I've been just very lucky, very blessed in my career that I've had the opportunity to participate in these types of transactions. I cut my teeth in public accounting. I got that job at Ernst & Young through on-campus interviews at Cal State East Bay. And as Asha said, I'm a Cal State East Bay graduate. I wanna go a little bit deeper about who I am. I am a first generation to attend college. Um, I am first generation in the United States. My parents um, um, came across from Europe into Canada and then came down into the United States. I'm the youngest of five children that they had. And my parents are wonderful people. They've done a, I had a wonderful childhood, but they didn't know anything about college. They were not college graduates. They, um, they didn't believe that college was worthwhile. And so none of my siblings went to college. It was literally by luck that I ended up at Cal State East Bay. And, and how that happened, it was May of my senior year in high school. So you know how that is to apply to colleges. It's May, I'm picking up my books out of my accounting professor's class. And he says to me, Tammy, where are you going to college? And I looked at him and I'm like, oh, I'm not going to college. And he looked at me, he was just so shocked. He couldn't understand, like, he goes, you need to go to college. You should really go to college. I didn't know the first thing about college. I didn't. None of my siblings had gone, my parents didn't recommend it. And, and so I asked him, I said, I don't even know where I would go. And he mentioned Cal State East Bay. He said, you should check out Cal State East Bay. Well, at that point in time, 
I had to convince my parents that it was a good idea for me to go to college. Again, they're, they're wonderful people, so I don't want you to think terrible about them. They just didn't know. My, my parents believed that you graduated high school, you learned a trade, or you got a job, and you got to work. They grew up during the war, and, and, and this is what they believed. Um, so it took me convincing them. Thank goodness my sister had married somebody who had graduated from college. He helped work on my parents. They ultimately agreed for me to attend Cal State East Bay, but I had to work to put myself through college. So I worked a full-time job through my entire college um, <laughs> endeavor. And much like you, I sat in these late night classes as uh, you know, I worked full time, I commuted to Lockheed Martin and, and worked there and then went to night school. Why does this matter? Why, why, why even share all this with you? Why I want to share it with you is that I want you to know I am not any different than you, than all of you out there. I didn't grow up in an Ivy League family where my parents attended Ivy League schools and all my siblings were groomed for college. I didn't come from that. I came from a very loving family that I, I, I absolutely enjoyed, but I worked through college. I worked hard. I am very similar to what a lot of you are. I'm sure you're probably working full time. You're going to night school. And, and I was able to achieve a leadership role in an organization. This isn't out of reach. This isn't out of reach for any of you. You don't have to be in finance, whatever you're interested in. If you're even interested in leading an organization or being a manager or being a director or a vice president or a chief level or a board member, it's not out of reach. And, and so that's why I wanted to share that with you. And from here, I, I really wanna share how I feel, um, the things that I did that I think helped my career. And then, like I said earlier, some of the things I learned because I made a lot of mistakes, a lot of mistakes, and I learned from those mistakes and I still am challenged to this day um, with some of the um, negative thoughts that happen in my head that tend to happen to women. Um, not all women and, and some men have it too, but predominantly women, um, we'll have these negative thoughts. So I wanna talk a little bit about that as we go through um, some of these slides. So to start off, what, what I felt like I maybe did right in my career, and, and part of it is just who I am as a person. There, is, there has never been any job, any task that has been beneath me. I step into organizations. I do what, is, what needs to be done to get the job done. I did that when I stepped into Ernst & Young. I did what needed to be done to get the job done. If it was a copying project, I, yeah, I went to college, but I, somebody had to do the copying project, so I would do it. What that gave me is that managers like to work with me because I was easy to work with. Um, I'd cooperate. I wasn't difficult. I just rolled up my sleeves and I did what needed to be done. And from there, when people left Ernst & Young, managers that I worked with, they would reach out to me. Hey, Tammy, we have a job here. Are you interested to come over and work with us? So it started building those relationships. I do feel that was a very significant factor in, in helping my career. Additionally, what I think is really important in building a career, and it's so hard right now with COVID, um, is, is really talking to people. So I know we're in this darn video trapped in these boxes, and I wish I could be in front of you and really engaging with all of you, and we just can't right now. But when we're, like in the old days, when we're back in the office <laughs> and we can actually see people and, and go talk to people, I... I'm one that will not just send an email. I won't even call. I get out of my office, out of my, you know, it's good. Get up and walk. I walk over. If I have a question for somebody, I'm going to walk over to their office. I'm going to go talk to them. I'm going to ask my question. I may ask how their kids are doing. I'm going to create that relationship with the people that I work with. And, and you, you really need to try to do that. I have managed people that only email, 
and they don't build those cross-functional relationships. And it has been very detrimental to their career because other departments don't know them. So you really do want to connect with people within your department, in other departments, and you want to try to do that face-to-face -face when you can, when it's appropriate. Right now, I guess the key thing is turn on your video. You're probably in a lot of meetings. Yeah, sometimes we just worked out and our hair is on a ponytail. Turn on your video. It's just a way to connect with people more so than, you know, coming and the video is not on. Um, the other item is I don't care. I, I, I step into these growth organizations and what that means, that sounds really cool as a growth organization. What does that mean? That means that we have a lot of work to do. <laughs> it means that there are a lot of things that are being implemented. It means there are a lot of things that are broken that need to be fixed um, cross-functionally, all departments. And so when I step into these kinds of organizations, we may see that a certain department is lacking in procedures or needs some help that is outside the finance and accounting world. I don't care. I don't care that it's maybe customer support that needs help or marketing or sales. I'm gonna step in and I'm gonna help because I want the company to succeed. So I will cross boundaries. There is no job that's not my job. I'm not the kind of person that sits back and says, oh, look at marketing's failing. This is great. I can't wait to watch. Look at sales. They can't figure it out. Not only do I not do that, I won't hire people that do that. So right now I'm recruiting for two crucial positions um, in my company, a controller and a director of FP&A. I've had to have some additional conversations with one of the candidates because, not because I feel um, he does this. I wanna make sure he's willing to roll up his sleeves, dig in, we're a small team, he needs to be able to do the work. Um, and so that's, that's part of not being afraid of, there will be some hard work involved in having a successful career. You, you will have times where you're gonna need to work hard. Uh, and the only caveat I might add to that in regards to working hard is be careful with that. As women, we tend to work really hard. We're going to work hard. We're going to get this done. And we know, we just know that our boss is going to recognize us and reward us for that. That's not the way it is. You have to be your own advocate. So yes, there are times you're going to have to work hard. I happen to be in one of those right now. I've been working hard for quite a while, working crazy hours. I'm trying to get my balance back, hiring key positions. Um, but don't expect that somebody above you is gonna recognize that and reward you for your hard work. You need to be your own advocate. Um, being a humble team player is super important. I'm very humble in my work. I don't feel uh, I'm, we're all in this together. We're going to get this done. And, and I look for those type of team players too, as I'm hiring people. Those are the people I want on my team. I want the people that know their job. They're humble. They're not afraid to work hard. They're willing to roll up their sleeves and get the job done. And, and these are, again, just some of the traits that I took into my career and I do feel like they had a very positive impact on where I am today. What I, I love this quote at the bottom. This quote came from a friend of mine who is a coach. He is also in finance and, and I loved when he would say this, that we want people to impact the score, not keep score. And, and so we want those people to impact the business I don't want to work with the kind of people that sit back and blame other organizations or um, watch people fail. And, and so these are, again, items that I think had an impact on my career positively and are traits that I look for in other people as I hire. The other item that helps as you, as you think about your career and maybe where you want to go is, is being passionate about what you do. I stumbled into the life science industry. I started my career in high tech and um, I came out of Ernst & Young, landed a job in a high tech company. I had no idea what my company did. It made like a little thing that went on a motherboard and it helped a computer run. 
people would ask me what my company did. I had no idea. I couldn't explain it. I did a good job there, but I didn't really understand the overall company. I didn't understand the industry. I wasn't really interested. From there, I went to a software company. Uh, we made engineering software, equally complicated, equally high tech. Um, again, I did my job there and understood my job, but I didn't take it to the next level to really understand the company or the industry. Then I, by luck, landed into a medical device company. It was a medical device that um, had a eye procedure to fix myopia. So it was an implant to fix myopia. I loved it. I understood what it did. It, it was a vision correction company is what we were. It, it wasn't a life-saving medical device, but it helped people who wanted their vision corrected. It was awesome. I would go back in the lab and there would be cadaver eyes and, and you know, the guys in R&D would let me do procedures on the cadaver eyes. I could see how our product worked. I understood it. And I never left life science companies at that point in time because I understood who our customers were. They were people. People were using our product. I understood how they used it. I began to get more interested in the industry that we were in, who the competitors were, how we sell our product. I understood the company at a higher level. And I have to tell you, this is crucial in any organization, in any position you step into. You step into marketing, you need to understand the company, the products, how they're sold. Um, human resources, you got to understand the company, the industry, your competitors, definitely finance, uh, just crucial. It is helpful if you're really passionate about the industry you work for. It, I didn't know what I was passionate about. I got lucky that I stumbled into a life science company and, and realized this is something I could relate to and it really interests me. Um, so I, I know sometimes you got to try to figure it out, but maybe you like, you know, you like Facebook or you like Google. Um, you know, there's some amazing companies in this area, uh, in the Bay Area, from life science to high tech to social media. So think about what you might be interested in and then kind of target those companies. It'll help you be successful in your career to combine those two together. So things to watch out for. Um, first of all, failure happens. Uh, it's painful when it happens. It's happened to me um, a number of times. It hurts. It can be crushing. Uh, it can make you want to quit. And, and you have to just take a, a deep breath, maybe cry. I've cried when I failed, so <laughs> it's not unusual. But you got to roll up your sleeves and you got to grow from it. You got to figure out what went wrong. Um, you might need help from somebody else to figure out what went wrong and how you could fix it. But you got to roll up your sleeves and keep going. It, it's painful, I know, um, but we all can do it. I've done it. I, I just had it recently. Um, failed with a board meeting, and uh, I really had to analyze what went wrong and and how how could I have done things differently, and how will I do it differently next time. So it happens, it's an opportunity for us to grow. Just look at it, try to turn it into a positive and just be better. Uh, this, is, this is really more specific to women and you guys are so lucky. You're in this, um, you know, women in leadership class, you're learning these things. I didn't, I didn't understand how women think and we think a lot alike especially as we go through our professional careers until recently where I found a women's organization and I went to a couple of meetings and I realized, oh my gosh, I thought it was just me. You mean all women, a lot of women think like this. So what you really wanna watch out for are those negative voices in your head, you know, right between those ears and they're telling you, I don't belong here. I'm not as smart as them. I might sound stupid. I don't wanna say anything you got to stop those voices. Um, I struggle with this still. It is hard. You got to turn it around. I do belong here. I absolutely belong here. And I am as smart as them. 
and something I say is probably going to be relevant and meaningful in this conversation, so I need to speak up and say it. You got to turn those negative voices off. Um, some of these things that we say in between our ears, you wouldn't say if you have children, you wouldn't say it to your daughter, you wouldn't say it to your friend. And so why we beat ourselves up, um, it's just, it's painful, um, but we do. And it's something that uh, women tend to do. And so being aware of it is good and, and trying to stamp it out uh, as you go through your career. Uh, what is your confidence level? Do you have a lot of confidence? or you feel like you have a lack of confidence. A lot of women suffer from this um, in their professional career that they don't feel confident. And, and I struggle with this too. I have always struggled with this and I, I still do to this day. I have, um, you know, I've gone to talks, I've read books. This is a really good one. Um, this speaker is amazing. She impacted me in so many ways uh, in, in her book and the confidence effect and just women and confidence and how a lot of us tend to have a lack of confidence. Uh, I, ha I listen to other women and, and I take little tidbits of what I learn and I apply it to my daily life as I um, work through my professional career. So there are ways that I will boost myself up before I go into a meeting. What makes you, you know, if you, if you feel like you have a lack of confidence, what can make you feel stronger? You got to find what helps you. Um, it's weird for me, working out. Uh, so if I know I have a big meeting, I get up early and I work out in the morning because I want to feel strong. Feeling strong makes me, my confidence just, it builds me up. I have mantras that I say in my head. They're going to be so lucky when I walk in there and talk because they have been listening to men all day and I'm different and how lucky they are that they get to finally hear me. Um, I psych myself up. And so you got to learn what works for you. I have overanalyzed and overthought instead of actively participating. And this is in meeting settings. And this also affects a lot of us, um, not just women. I mean, it can affect men too, but a lot of women are affected by this. I sit frequently in meetings where I'm the only woman and I have had that paralyzing thought that I didn't wanna speak up. I didn't want to participate in the conversation because uh, I didn't know if I fit in, again, those negative thoughts and you need to participate. It does make a difference to participate. I currently have a CEO that I work for who, he, who is male. I have heard him say, well, John never participates on those phone calls, so he's not really useful. Yeah, he, he adds no value to meetings because he doesn't speak up. I know how my CEO thinks. I, I hear him say those words. And so it's really important um, to be brave. And in those situations, just say it, say what you're thinking. The worst thing that happens, and it's happened to me where I have a thought and I'm like, oh, I should say it, but I hesitate. And then somebody across the room says it and everybody says, oh, what a great idea. <laughs> and that was my thought, you know? So be brave, speak up. Um, this, you know, the women leaders, I know for me personally, at a lot of organizations, in fact, most organizations, in fact, I have to think almost every company I have worked at, I have been the only women, uh, woman on the executive team. I have been the only woman in the boardroom. This company, there's actually two other women on women on the board, which they're amazing. Um, California, you know, has some. Um, they're really trying to change that and bring more women into the boardroom, as you know. But it can be unnerving to be the only woman in a in a meeting, and that's where you really need to work on that confidence. And I feel like in this quote, kind of hits it. You know, when investigating what deters professional advancement for women, the journalists Katie Kay and Claire Shipman found 
that a shortage of competence is less likely to be an obstacle than a shortage of confidence. And that's what's preventing us to move into these leadership roles. Uh, and it's just, you know, I, it's something we need to watch. We need to work on. We deserve to be in these leadership roles. You all deserve to be in these leadership roles. If you know your trade, you're, you're, work, you're willing to work hard and learn and do what it takes. You deserve to be there. I'm sorry, my dog is barking. <laughs> Okay, where did my, there we go. So confidence, this is a big thing. It, it, this has been something that I have struggled with in my career, uh, and yet I am a chief financial officer and I still struggle with this in my career. So it's something that I like to talk about a little bit because it hits home for me and I work on it all the time. Um, I work on it with my daughter. I see her lacking in confidence in certain areas as she's applying for jobs. And you have all probably heard this before and we kind of laugh about it. Um, but for me in particular, if I'm putting out a resume, uh, I'm sorry, if I'm putting out a job description because I'm gonna hire somebody, I'll put like 10 qualifications for uh, what I want this person to have. And women will read that and they will say, oh, I only have eight. I'm not going to apply for this job because I only have eight. I'm not qualified. And a man will read that and they will say, yeah, I have two. I'm going to apply for this job. I think I can get this. And I know we've heard that, but it's very, very true. My daughter right now is applying for jobs and she's bringing me these job recs with the description of what is needed. And she'll say, I better not apply for this because I, I, I don't have this one qualification. And so again, it's just something we need to watch. Underqualified and underprepared, men don't think twice about leaning in. Overqualified and overprepared, too many women still hold back. Women feel confident only when they are perfect. Watch out for that perfection too. Um, that's another thing that we fall victim to. So I, I wanna share this video with you. Um, this is a video by Pantene, Pantene Hair Products. And I have to say Pantene and Dove have put together some amazing videos. Some of them actually have brought tears to my eyes because they're all about women and confidence and how women see themselves. And some of them are just very touching. This one is a little more business related. This is about women and how we tend to apologize when we really shouldn't be apologizing. And, and saying sorry when you shouldn't be apologizing makes you look not very confident. And so in, these, in this clip, it's a really short clip. The initial clip will be women and they're apologizing for something that they shouldn't be apologizing for. And then the clip will rerun and the same women in the same situation will use stronger words to interject in a conversation. And, and so let me just, I'm hoping I can play this. I hope it has sound. Um, let's just see if this works. The prototype that we've built. Sorry, can I ask a stupid question? Sorry. I had to stop that for just a minute because did you hear that? She said, sorry, can I ask a stupid question? Oh, it's just, it's heartbreaking. And yet, yeah, we've, we've, I've done that. Do you have a minute? <sighs> sorry. Yes. Sorry, not 
sorry. Sorry, not sorry. So a very short clip that I wanted to share with you all. Um, I, I've told you about my CEO, uh, who is a man, he is very confident. He will walk into a meeting late. He would walk right in front of the presentation, right in front of everybody. He would sit down and he would never, ever say sorry. Now, sometimes you might wanna say sorry if you've actually hurt somebody, but it's just, again, it's, it's that lack of confidence that we portray at times. And you just want to watch that. Um, I still will catch myself saying sorry for no reason. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I've been talking so long. <laughs> well, to wrap it up, and I feel like maybe we should ask questions in between here, Asha, but... I just want to say, you know, really watch your attitude. Yes, you might be the only woman in a meeting and, and how great, how great because you stand out. People will remember you. Use that to your advantage. Think positive. So again, I, I have mantras that I use in my head before I, before I walk into a board meeting, before I present. Um, failure or missteps, it's part of growing. Just you know, roll up your sleeves and come back stronger. Work on what failed, make it better. Uh, network with women organizations. Um, it's a reminder for me that I'm not alone and it makes me feel stronger. It gives me strength to know that the way I'm thinking is the way a lot of other people think. Um, mentor other women, you know, as you move on in your career, reach back and, and help out. So just remember, sometimes you can be your own worst enemy. Some of the organizations that I have been involved in and, and I think are fantastic organizations, Watermark was one of the first women's organization, was one of the first places where I actually learned about some of these things that um, women fall victim to. It's a great organization. They put on a lot of wonderful events. If you're interested in life sciences, there's a group, Women in Bio. Um, I've put on here Association of Bioscience Officers. It's not just a women's organization, it's a financial organization. I'm actually on the board of this organization. Uh, it is, I mean, it's really for people in finance and accounting. You don't have to be an officer. We have all kinds of events and learning, um, you know, trainings. Get involved, find the organization with your, within your interest or your industry and, and, and get involved. And with closing, um, because I am in finance and accounting and that's where my career has been, I did wanna add that what were some of the things that I found that helped me in my career or, or at least um, get into my career and with any on campus or I know they don't do on campus right now, but any items that any social events or you know webinars that your campus may coordinate with corporations, you should be involved in those. It gives you a chance to network to meet people within um, companies that you might want to work at. Uh, take advantage of campus interviews if they're offered for your your field. Um, that again, that's how I got my start. Um, look into internships. If you are interested in an organization, reach out um, to those organizations and see if you can get an internship. A lot of times those internships turn into jobs. Um, use your network for opportunities. And if you, again, if you're interested in finance and accounting, find people in that field and, and ask them, you know, how did they get into their field? There, there's all different ways to get into fields. Um, and, and anything that they would recommend of doing or not doing that could help you advance in, that, in these particular fields. And really that's for any field that you're interested in.